And well, it's this whole concept of black money, I mean, I don't understand <laughs> the cash that is given below 2,000 can be black money. The 20,000 rupees has to be disclosed. That also can be black money. Because you can say cash in hand, 20,000 rupees. And the electoral bond can also be black money. And over, above, over and above that, there is black money. It must never be forgotten that this constitution is citizen-centric. It is for the citizens to decide to donate. If you want corporate funding, then that corporate funding must be for the electoral process, it must not be for political parties. But if the voice of the corporate sector well, it drowns the voices of citizens, well, that's a very dangerous trend in democracy. I can't raise questions in parliament. I can't raise questions outside parliament. Because the scheme, Malaj, has no definite objective. If it were a definite objective of funding through the corporate sector, the process of election without funding a political party, I can understand. You can have electoral bonds to fund the election process. But what you're doing here is you're funding a party. It's different. The object is different. So you call it electoral bonds, but these are not electoral bonds. And the limit of expenditure has nothing to do with it. Well, it's 123, six of the Constitution, uh, of the Representation of People's Act, talks of expenses. Corruption, an act of corruption beyond 95 lakhs now. So the larger issue that your lordships will have to consider that this is no part of participatory democracy at all. Every scheme must have a legi legitimate object. What's the legitimate object here? Which is constitutional. It is, it, the, the scheme must be such, it must be proportionate to the objects sought to be achieved. And it, the underlying principle under the Constitution is free and fair election, which is a basic feature of the Constitution. How are you serving these three purposes, Mothers? You are serving none of these three. No legitimate object because the, it is not limited to the uh, elections. No proportionality because it's unlimited. And no free and fair elections because my learned friend has shown to your lordships how heavily it is loaded towards the party in power. So you are creating a non-level playing field through the electoral bonds. And that's violative of 324. Now, Malaz, historically, as your lordship knows, Malaz, in 1969, through legislation, we had Miller prohibited corporate donations altogether. And in 1985, Miller, through an amendment, we said, okay, the corporate sector can donate, but only to the extent of 5% of the average earnings in the last three years, three financial years. 5% or 7.5%? I'm sorry? Okay. Initial 5%. Well, as 85 was 5%, then through an amendment, it was 2013 Act, it was changed to 7.5. 2000? 13. The Companies Act. Well, actually, I've put it all in the written submissions, but because my learned colleagues are waiting for me to end, so I'm not wanting to take their time, well, as your lordships have said that do it, you know, be as short as possible. But whatever I have said to your Lordships, Malaj, are the propositions that emerge from the scheme itself. It must never be forgotten 
that this constitution is citizen centric. It is for the citizens to decide to donate. If you want corporate funding, then that corporate funding must be for the electoral process, it must not be for political parties. Otherwise, it would not be free and fair election. But if the voice of the corporate sector well, drowns the voices of citizens, well, that's a very dangerous trend in democracy. And well, this whole concept of black money, I mean, I don't understand <laughs> the cash that is given below 2,000 can be black money. The 20,000 rupees has to be disclosed. That also can be black money. Because you can say cash in hand, 20,000 rupees. And the electoral bond can also be black money. And over, above, over and above that, there is black money. Because there is cash that doesn't go into electoral bonds. So what is this black money issue about? The kind of extravaganzas that we see, mothers, is what? Is it white money? So this is nothing to do with black money. This is the, this is the case of the government. That black money was used earlier, no doubt. Black money is used, used today, no doubt. There is more cash in the market than it was in 2014 or 2019. That's government's own statistics. So black money is a bogey. And all three elements can be part of black money. That can't be an argument. So Delta. And then, so the three issues, Mullahs, I have raised at page PDF 75, whether corporate donations should be allowed at all. But that's not a question that your lordships has to answer. If yes, which what kinds of companies should be allowed to make such decisions? If corporate donations are allowed, what cap of net profits should be set? And who is the appropriate body within the corporation to authorize such donations? That's if you agree to all what the other side says. If you agree to what the government says, Miller, then these questions will arise. But that's subject to my submissions that I've made to your laws. The shareholder argument, Miller, that I placed there, paragraph 43, the objects of the company and all that, which I've already made a component from it upon. Then I've given the history. Then 2013, my Lord asked the question, the cap of 7.5, that's at para 47. And actually, Mother, there's a wonderful report of Justice Shah, I think at the Law Commission, which actually sets out the practices in all the countries, UK, US, Japan, Philippines, um, Australia, and Germany. And in all those countries, there is no question of any opacity. Most countries do not allow corporate donations at all. But where they do allow, there's no opacity. And this is all at PDF page. You may we only note it. 296 in volume 4. Hmm. That, that's my learning. So that Kishan Bhushan has covered. That's really it, Malas. I, I want to take as little time as possible. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Deeply. Yes, Mr. Pash. Yes, Mr. Parasar. I appear Malas, for Red Petition 59, because we are the only political party before your lordships. And Malas, despite being a ruling party, Malas, we have taken a principled stance not to accept. May I be excused for that? Yes, Mr. Sir. Not to Malas, accept any electoral bonds. And we have not taken a single rupee of electoral bonds in the last five and a half years. At, uh, if I may say so, Malas, at much cost to us. Malas, I will, there are three submissions, Malas, I'll try to make very quickly. Malas, first, the report of the ADR, 
uh, it says that your party has got some electoral bonds also. No, that's because they gave us this thing. We have just given the detail because they asked the when the elect your lordship's order when uh, the order was passed that every party has to disclose details. So we would have just responded saying that we have not taken any electoral bonds. There's no question of taking any. This is a principal stance. We have not taken any. 